What's up everyone? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am in my office currently getting the day started and as a matter of fact while I'm here I just realized that I may not have shown you on this channel what the finished product looks like for the removable tube front ends for the Evo 8s and 9s. I just so happen to have one that is recently back from powder coating and I wanted to make sure to show that on my channel at least once here. It's a really, uh, you know, really nice finished product. I'm happy with how it comes out. Uh, I use a local powder coater, uh, a partner of mine actually, for all of my powder coating. Their name is Crown Customs and Coatings, so shout out to those guys. If you're in the Chicagoland area, and even out of town for that matter, and you need some powder coating, definitely hit those guys up because they do a phenomenal job. And just as I was mentioning before, the outcome from their work is just phenomenal. You can see the welds are really clean on this thing. I mean, you guys got a chance to see this thing when it was uncoated, so you could really see the welds, but I mean, they do a nice job of plugging all of the threaded inserts and all that so that nothing gets in there. And this bad boy is ready to bolt up. I've got a local friend and customer that is gonna be picking this up. So I've got a standard hardware kit ready for him along with the box plates that have the nuts welded back on them. Uh, they're coated in a little bit of oil and ready for him to pick up. I'm gonna talk to him about hopefully getting him to move up to the titanium hardware. Cause I mean, let's face it, this is not a small investment. And if you're doing this, you're probably trying to save every ounce. And uh, I mean, you wanna be a baller and use titanium hardware anyway, let's face it. So off to the shop. And today we're back on the Calypso Coyote swapped Fox body, Sinclair. It's a fun car and I'm having a good time working on it. Hope you guys are all enjoying and watching it. And I wanna remind you, if you are new to the channel, please hit subscribe because I'm trying to build my user or my audience base for that matter. And if you guys are into race cars, like this one, world record holding Mitsubishi Evo 8, mid second, mid nine second street car, or for instance, a project like this, which is a bit of a hybrid. It's a 86 Fox body Mustang. that has got a new Coyote motor swapped into it and we're doing a custom twin turbo kit on it so if you're into race cars and cool shit like this you should probably start subscribing to this channel and we definitely like hearing feedback from you so if you have any comments feedback whether you like my work you don't like my work I'm open to it all and you can leave those comments below definitely if you want to be aware of new videos that are coming you want to hit that notification uh, bell because otherwise you're not gonna know the moment I upload a video. So today's project is gonna start off with extending the frame rails on this because the last uh, fabrication shop that had their hands on this really butchered it. And you can see they didn't cut it evenly at all. And most importantly, we need to install this bumper support, which is supposed to bolt on like this, but as you can see, the bottom doesn't have anywhere to bolt because they cut it so short. So I've got to extend those frame rails in order to accommodate this bumper support. And in addition to that, Ed, the owner of the vehicle, still wants to drive this car on the street quite a bit. So he needs some brackets made for the front clip to hold on to his turn signals. And I've got to make those as well once I get the bumper support in place but for now I've got to go ahead and extend that frame so that this gets uh, on there properly anyway that's what's going on today stay tuned and you'll get to see how it comes out so as I'm working on this here you can see that the cut that was made by the previous fabricator is not very straight at all and what I want to do is I want to extend, ext I can't even talk this morning. I want to extend the frame down far enough to accommodate, but obviously cutting a nice straight piece like I do in my bandsaw is not gonna work well. So what I do is I take a little tool like this 
and this helps give you a measurement or helps you trace the contour of an uneven surface so what I'll do is I'll just press this up against the frame here in order to get the shape that this is and you can see now it's kind of taking that little slight waviness turn and then I transfer that to this template right here so that's what that mark is from and that's what I'm going to do on each side I'm going to weld these extended plates on the what's left of the frame here you can see how that's probably what was left um, similar to the thickness of metal this is just some standard steel which is similar to what's on the vehicle I try and use stainless for everything or chromoly for that matter but when it comes to welding you know directly on the chassis I just use standard steel because it's the most consistent with what's going to be on the chassis so I just wanted to kind of give you guys a little bit of an insight on small details that make a big difference in speeding up the process and also keeping things quality and fitting well. quick fast forward for you guys built both of those plates and here's the driver's side one for example fits right there and then once it's mounted I'll drill the hole for the for the bumper support and I've also gone ahead and cleaned up all of the frame around where I'm going to be welding obviously a nice section outside where I'm welding so that it doesn't pull on any contamination and I've done that on both sides so I just need to clean it up with some acetone really quick and then I can start welding. Okay, so quick update. Got the frame extended on each side, and you can see I've bolted on temporarily mock up bolts for the front bumper support. So, the next thing that I need to do is put the front clip back on this thing and start fabricating some turn signal brackets off of this. And so, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some stainless rod and build some little brackets that come off this thing with some little downward ends on it that'll hold these turn signals and that's what's going on next because these guys need to sit behind the front clip in that position right there and they need to be mounted to that bar so that when you pull the front clip off they stay on the bar and makes it easy to remove so just a little heads up on what's coming next so I've got the front clip back on now and I'll give you a little peek into what I'm doing 
So you can see this stainless rod that I've tacked on here to the bumper support that we just finished working on. And now we gotta get this turn signal mounted behind this opening here. So I'm taking this guy and I'm trying to figure out how I wanna build some brackets upward that'll mount to the back side of this and just hold it in place. So I've kind of got sort of a, a little bit of a mock-up that I can show you. It's not exact, but that's kind of what we're looking for in terms of placement. Okay, so we are finished now with the turn signals. Those are now final mounted. And I'm here with my friend Shane. He's over here helping me record a bunch of this stuff and get better perspective. So you'll, you'll be seeing him a lot, of, a lot more often in these videos, I'm sure. Especially when it comes to going to the races. And anyway, so each of these uh, turn signals is mounted in the bumper currently. I'll give you a quick uh, perspective on the back side. We're gonna actually take this thing off and double check fitment and how it works. But you can see how I've just integrated this into the uh, bumper support. My light is now telling me that it's gonna die soon because it's flashing at me. But we will snap just now over to bumper being off the car. Okay, here we are, bumper off, and now you can see we've got our turn signal brackets that we've integrated into this thing, and those came out nice. Here's another shot on the other side. So now we have our bumper support, we have our turn signal brackets, we have our radiator support and the custom brackets for those as well. We have extended the frame on each frame rail in order to accept this bolt-on bumper support and now we are finally about ready to start playing with turbo kits which is what we were here for in the beginning you guys know that i teased you a little bit that something arrived from fp and those boxes definitely contain something from fp but because of the turbos that we're running which i will tell you are zona rotor x 3C XR 8268s. One of them is a reverse rotation, so it's a mirror setup. They don't happen to have all the components they need in order to make that configuration for those two turbos. So what they were nice enough to do was send me some mock-up turbos. They don't have the internals, but they are the same size housings. And they will do just fine in order for us to start making progress on the turbo kit. And as you can see, a bunch of other items that we need in order to start making the manifolds and also the rest of the turbo kit has arrived so i've got a bunch of these components through turn 14 so i appreciate that shout out to those guys and then some of the other components that uh, are in the mix here were from motivicity distribution so between those two distributors they always have me covered so shout out to those guys i appreciate that very much i also have all the materials that I need in order to start building the manifold. And so I want to shout out to Wes Williams over at W2 Fab. That guy is a really nice uh, distributor of materials. He does a really nice job of prepping everything. So these all come right out of the box, ready to weld. I just clean them up with a little bit of acetone and we're ready to go. I also want to shout out to FDR Fab because another distributor friend of mine who has hooked us up with a bunch of different trick bends both three inch and two and a half stainless steel 
If you haven't already, check those guys out online, FDR Fab. They source and provide a bunch of different fabrication components. All of their materials are really nice and clean. Again, weld ready right out of the box. I just clean them up with a little bit of acetone just to be sure. And you know, it's a cheap insurance just in case the, anything throughout the shipping process gets in there. And we're just about ready to start working on the manifolds for this thing. Uh, we should have flanges here Monday and once they arrive i'll start mocking things up but for now the first thing that i'm gonna have to do with the turbo kit is these collectors come like this from vibrant and i want to break them down and polish them up so that they match the rest of the materials that i'm going to use from wes over at w2 fab so as far as the turbo kit goes that's going to be the next thing on the agenda and we'll definitely be keeping you guys in the loop to see how this all comes together so if you haven't already, please do hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. Uh, I'm obviously a new channel and I'm looking to build uh, my audience and love to hear from you guys. So if you have any feedback, comments, both good or bad, feel free to leave them below. And if you like this video or any other videos, feel free to hit like as well. So um, with that being said, I think we'll go ahead and wrap up this episode and we'll bring you some manifold development here next time. Thanks for watching.